time you've got SSL encrypted uh, uh, a transport on your, on your web server. Uh, five, what? Actually, they're saying that uh, the next version of Apache will ship with that client. It'll ship with the, cli the client built in? Yes. Wow, good. good. They have a client for Apache and they have a client for Nginx. I use HA proxy all the time. They don't have a client for that, so I, I'm not really sure. I, I, I think they're working on it, but there's nothing yet. Uh, anybody here use HA proxy? It's a fantastic piece of software. It's very, very simple. Uh, I think we had a good presentation on this sometime. It's a, it's a, it's a load balancer caching. And, I don't know how much caching it does, but it's a load balancer. Use that as my termination point for my SSL, and behind the scenes, I have my Apache servers, so I can have lots of different servers, but only have one certificate on my HA proxy server, and that's my gateway coming in. Uh, anyway, uh, Let's Encrypt doesn't support that yet, but I because <coughs> HA proxy is pretty popular. Yeah. What's the rationale for the uh, short uh, <coughs> renewal time on that? Thirty um, days. That that's sure. I think they're. They're probably not doing certificate revocation lists. Um, I'm not sure about that. Uh, also, they're not doing extended validation certificates. They're just doing standard validation. I think too. It, it's since you have all these uh, systems out there pinging for new certificates and whatnot, it's to make sure that you know if something goes away, that you're no longer or or gets compromised in some fashion, yeah. that you're not. You know, if, if the site goes away, you're not. Uh, there's no SSL certificate for it, unless someone asked for it I think it's, recently. I think it's a pretty neat idea. I'm just a little concerned about the validation part of uh, the identity management. Part. Well, C CA certificates are kind of goofed up anyway, though. I mean, you have instances like DigiNotar, which issued uh, certificates for high-ranking sites. Yeah. You have Symantec, which is on the. Uh, <laughs> on Google's uh, list, mm -hmm. and not the good list, the other yeah. list. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Symantec ought to be on the good list, but they're they, got, they, got, they, they did some bad things. Yeah. Uh, in DigiNotar, I think that's the one that was a sub uh, certificate authority for Komodo, uh, and they were issuing certificates, Komodo certificates, uh, that were indeed not not to people who. Said not not to people not to people that they should have been right uh, people who were saying that they were certain sites but weren't. Um, I think Google also has an initiative to try to have short or search short lived. I think it's really because of the compromise of the, the private key. So you know if you're constantly reissuing private keys all the time, then you know if somebody gets a hold of it, it's only going to be good. It's only for, good for thirty days or yeah. Whatever, whatever that time period. It could be. It's not committing. Is it 90? 90 days? You found it. Okay. So it's good for 90 days. Um, imagine 30, they'd get an awful lot of traffic. Right. Uh, and it is just in beta right now, so it's going to go through some changes, I'm sure. Uh, it's, it's a neat idea. I'd rather see everybody using it to secure their sites than not. Uh, it's probably got the, uh, the real. Root certificate authorities scared right now because it's going to get into their business somewhat. Well, it's going to drive the cost down, that's for sure. It's going to drive the cost down. It's good for us as consumers. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Anyway, um, additional resources. I, I'm showing this here, but I'm going to come back to that later. Uh, a couple of really cool sites for testing your stuff. Uh, so that kind of covers my slides. So uh, I have, uh, let me give you a little idea of what the environment is here. I have set up a server on AWS. Uh, it's a Ubuntu 14.04 server. I just set it up this afternoon. Uh, it's not running anything except Apache. Um, uh, it's got a fast <coughs> IP address. And as long as I keep the machine running, it's going to retain that IP address. I set up a, a, uh, uh, a 
DNS entry in Mug's uh, DNS server, uh, and I call it uh, SSL Talk. So we have a machine called SSL Talk. .mug.org. I think I can. I'm going to get on that screen. Uh, I think I can go to www. No, go to SSL Talk. Okay, it's a website. All you, it's public. All you guys can go there too. If you got a, if you got a laptop or something or your cell phone or whatever, uh, you can go there. It's not encrypted. Yet. Right. If I try to go to HTTPS connection error. Um, it's, it's not. <coughs> so let's create a uh, self signed certificate um, that will allow me <coughs> to uh, connect up securely. Uh, I've got this uh, directory where I kind of I set up a script to do it. Uh, OpenSSL has a configuration file. OpenSSL is a very hairy command. It's got a lot of pieces to it. It does an awful lot of things. You do a man on OpenSSL. Uh, it does a lot of things, but there's a lot of standard commands. Right. Uh, a whole bunch of them. We're going to use like four of them. Anyway. I've got a configuration file, and I have to edit the configuration file. So uh, I'm going to copy that configuration file into my local directory and make a change to the to my copy. The only thing I'm going to change in this config file right now is this directory. Slash home, slash jam, slash uh, oh. so. So we're going to create a uh, self-signed certificate, and I, I, um, <coughs> I created this command called do it that is just really the, the command. You, is that font size okay? Yeah. Okay, see that all right? Um, this, uh, this is the OpenSSL, OpenSSL command uh, using the REQ. I'm going to create a re I'm, I'm requesting a, a new certificate. It's an X509 certificate. It's RSA uh, 2048 bit. I uh, specify the file I want to write it to, the, the key and the certificate. Uh, we are basically creating the key pair, the private and the public key. Right? I'm going to put my key out into a file called SSL talk underscore one underscore key dot pem and my certificate out into the same thing with underscore cert dot pem. Uh, I'm going to make it valid for 365 days. No des. That means uh, don't put a Passphrase on the on the private key. Okay, if you're using a private key for like signing things uh, as a CA, or if you're using a private key because you want to encrypt some files and send them, uh, I mean at the command line encrypt some files, uh, you definitely don't want this. Uh, uh, by default, it'll it'll ask you for a passphrase for the for the public for the private key. You don't want a passphrase on your private key because every time you restart Apache, it's going to prompt you for the, for the uh, passphrase. And, uh, you don't want that. Okay. and then dash SHA256. Uh, the default is SHA1 for signing things. Huh? I really want it signed with SHA256. Uh, browsers are complaining about that now. Uh, Chrome will definitely complain if it's, if it's not signed with uh, SHA256 or better. You get something called a Duffy Hillman error, right? Uh, no, you don't. That's, that's a different thing. Okay. Um, you definitely want to sign it with at least uh, SHA 256. You can also do, do MD5, which I think you don't want to do. Uh, for the same reason, you don't want to do SHA 1. Anyway, that's the command uh, that, that is going to generate our public and private key pair, <coughs> and uh, it's going to sign it. Um, well, there's a different. If you want to set up your own CA, we'll, we'll we'll do that again. There's a few other options we want to supply on that. 
Uh, but this is going to just give us a, a simple self-signed certificate. Uh, so let's do it. Right? Uh, when you create a certificate, it asks you a series of questions. Uh, there are several tools out there you can use, like uh, Easy RSA. Have you guys seen that? There's a shell script for doing it. I use that and I get confused all the time, and I really figured it's better to just go back and write down. It, it's a wrapper around OpenSSL. I really like just using the real tool to do it. It helps me understand what the higher level utilities are doing. Anyway, so it asked me a bunch of questions. So I tell it I'm from the US, uh, Michigan, Farmington Hills, that's where we are right now, right? Uh, organization name, mug.org. Uh, I'm going to leave the organizational unit uh, empty. I, I can do that. And then the FQDN. So this is where we give it the name of our server. Our server is called sslTalk.mug.org. Okay. Email address. I can put an email address in here. I can leave it blank. I'm just going to leave it blank. Okay. So now we have our certificate. Our, our public key is inside the certificate. And our private key is that uh, key to PM. see more interesting stuff about it, I can use the open SSL, SSL command, uh, text 509-n-sltalk-cert-text. Uh, There's all kinds of stuff about it down here. Uh, here's an interesting thing. Issuer. Issuer is the same as the subject. Okay. Self signed, it's exactly as you'd expect. Uh, some other good stuff in here. It's a version 3 uh, SSL, um, <coughs> version 3 X509 certificate. It's not SSL version 3. That's a whole different thing. Uh, it was signed with SHA 256. Um, I actually could use it as a CA. CA bit set, uh, one of the uh, basic constraints. Um, uh, and then there's the certificate itself, that encoded thing. It's a base 64 encoded uh, binary blob. Okay, so we've got this nice uh, certificate there. So what do we do with it? Let's, let's go ahead and install it into Apache. Uh, we do that by copying the certificate. I like to put my certificates in SSL certs. And we copy our, uh, our key to ETC SSL private. Okay. The thing about the private key, though, is uh, permissions and the ownership have to be uh, correct. So change own, root, root. Permissions on the certificate itself don't really matter. It's a public thing. Okay, so I installed the files there. Now we've got to go tell Apache we want to serve up SSL. So the way you do that, uh, you have to have first, um, uh, I don't have to run this command because I already did it. You have to basically uh, load the, uh, uh, the SSL module. So you do that with sudo uh, a2en mod SSL. If I run that, that'll affect all that complaint because it's already there. Uh, but basically, that line, that's how you uh, set up the SSL module for Apache, how you install the module for Apache. Right. And I have to en uh, sudo a2en sudo. I 
default, when you, when you set up SSL in Apache, it actually uses the snake oil uh, uh, certificate that, that was generated when the system was built. Right. Um, however, that's not the name of our machine right now. We try to go to it. Does that certificate have a, a use? Is it like uh, the sorry, sorry, what was that? Is, is that certificate, the snake oil, is that for testing purposes? Just yeah, it's it? for testing purposes. It uses the host name that the machine had when you built it, which uh, like on an Amazon machine, have you ever seen the host names that they, that they create for, for the machines? Or even if you build your own machine, uh, it, you know, it's probably going to be called Ubuntu. Uh, it's not very likely that that's the name of it. We're talking about the instance name, right? Yeah, the Amazon instance. It's not going to have a name like SSL Talk. Org. I had to do that. So uh, yeah. let's. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can restart Apache. Uh, <coughs> it's angry with me. Now it's serving up SSL, port 443, um, but it's not very happy with us. I go to advance and I proceed. I'm going to say, I can hit the site. If we go look at it. Uh, it doesn't like the identity because it, uh, the server certificate does not match the URL. Right? Because the server certificate uh, says it's. And the certificate is not trusted, it's a self signed certificate. So that's the name that uh, that got used when the system got built. Can you read that? No. Yeah, well, yeah. I, can't, I can't increase that box. Uh, anyway. Uh, so we're connected. Uh, it just doesn't trust the connection because of the certificate. So now let's go ahead and use our own certificate. Let's go ahead and tell it to start using it instead of using the snake oil service. And it's going to be just as angry at us, just for a different reason. the problem with this, the URL didn't match the certificate issue, <coughs> the subject. Now our problem is the certificate is not trusted. Yeah, now it's our right certificate. Um, from mug.org, um, it was issued by us and it just doesn't trust us. Uh, I could actually go install this certificate in the browser and it would, I think it would stop complaining about that. I never use self science search that way, though. Because I just I don't want to go to every browser I work with and tell them about it. Every time I generate a new search. Anyway, uh, that's our self science search. Can you, can you go in and tell it, um, always, always trust this? I think I have to install the certificate. I, excuse me, I have to get my power supply. From this. <laughs> I think I can install the certificate you used to be able to do it real easily with Chrome. It was just a checkbox. Always trust the certificate. Right. I think they've Firefox still they've does taken that away. Firefox still does it. Does it? Yeah. They've taken that feature away. Feature bug uh, in um, Chrome. 
because they don't want you doing it. I think the, sorry? I was wondering which part of Apache is running as root. Uh, i be able to read that private. I think uh, just when it starts up, I think it drops privileges to, uh, what does it run as www-data? But the uh, private certificate, uh, the key is in a uh, directory that can only be read by root. Right. But it reads it at startup time, though, and then it drops permissions. It starts oh. as root and then drops to, okay. to um, Yeah, it's running as www-data. In fact, actually, there is the core instance that's running as root still. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's the one that uh, accepts incoming connections, then immediately forks off a new process that drops to www-data to handle the request. So that's how it's able to read etc ssl slash private, because it is only readable by root. Good point. Um, all right, so now we're now we're getting juiced up, so that's good. All right, so that's that's how we do a self-signed certificate in the browser, in, in the, on the server, and the browser. Um, so all browsers will complain about that. Well, uh, Chrome has been complaining the longest. I think Firefox will complain about it now, um, uh, and offer you a checkbox to just it's like, yeah, I know. And you should click the checkbox and it accepts it from that point on. Uh, recent versions of, of IE um, will complain about it. Um, uh, it wasn't that long ago that they didn't complain. They just used it uh, without worry. Uh, I think what they were doing for a while is just showing different colors up here in the in here, but it didn't stop you from going there. Just, people had to know to look up there. You know, Anytime I go to a website that's asking for my credit card, I will always look at this thing up here. Yeah, it better be green. Right? It better be green. It better be. It better show me that it's some kind of uh, encrypted connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and once in a while, I'll see one that's not. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's how we connect up. Or that's that's how we do a uh, self-signed certificate. They're really kind of limited in, in their use. In, I'm going to leave that, that session there in the Apache uh, directory. So let's get on to doing the uh, this one. Uh, if you want to do a root, uh, if you want to create your own CA, your own certificate authority, you have to do a little more configuration. SSL. You have to have a directory uh, where you're going to put your stuff. Um, uh, and in that directory, you have to have installed a couple of things. Uh, it's basically just a couple of empty directories and uh, a couple of files. Um, so the files that I, the directories that I needed are the search directory, uh, the new search directory, and the private directory. And then I needed two files. I needed a file called index.txt that can just be empty, and a file called serial that has to have a serial number in it. And I started with 01. It's got to be at least two characters long. It can be longer. Uh, it really gets cranky if there's only one character or no characters in it or the file doesn't exist. Um, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is copy over that etc ssl uh, open openssl.conf file. I'm going to call it mugca.conf. I'm going to edit it. And again, the only thing I'm going to change in here is the name of my directory. There's lots of other stuff I could change in here, and I typically do. We can talk about that in a little bit. Slash home, slash jam, slash mug. Uh, OK, 
Okay, so I've got my config file. So now, so now let's create this certificate. Uh, when you when you when you want to create a CA or when you want to create certificates, you create a, a request for a certificate. That's what creates your public and your private key pair. Uh, you give it a bunch of parameters to tell it what kind of things you want in your in your uh, uh, certificate. And it creates a CSR, a certificate signing request. That CSR, uh, we're going to create a CSR and we're going to sign it with our own CA. I could take that CSR and, and <coughs> upload it to uh, NTrust or VeriSign or any of the others, and they could sign it for me if I pay them the money. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, though, is create, we have to create our root CA certificate, and then we're going to create our website certificate. So I'm going to create, let's see, I have, uh, I, have I, I wrote scripts for some of this stuff. This is what I was working on when, uh, when, when uh, Craig was talking. I was trying to automate some of these things. Uh, so uh, the way we create this, um, this CA certificate is really a lot like how we created the other one. It's a request. I specify my config file, verbose, new, where I want to put the file, uh, really where I want to put the two files, my, uh, my key and my request. The only thing we're not doing here is self-signing it. The other thing we did in one command, we created the keys and we self-signed the, the certificate, the public key. Okay, so let's run, uh, uh, run the CA request. Okay. Uh, and uh, first question it asks, it wants me to assign, notice I didn't do the dash no des. Because I'm, I'm creating this cert, the CA's certificate, public and private keys, and I really want to put a passphrase on that. So what's a good passphrase? Who was here last month for the SSH talk? We talked about passphrases. Right. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. He's dead, Jim. I would, I, I typed it just like that, lowercase, spaces where they're supposed to be. Uh, if I were doing this for real, I would create a much longer passphrase, um, something that nobody's going to be able to guess. Not uh, based on any public phrase that might Not be, based okay. on any public phrase. What I did when I, I, I'll give you a hint what I did when I created my CA for my organization. Mike said that was not a passphrase last month. <coughs> Michael Lucas said that was yeah. not a passphrase last month. No, what I, what I did for my CA, uh, I took, uh, I, I opened up a dictionary. And I just thumbed through the dictionary and I picked eight random words that were at least eight characters long each. Okay. Wow. Right? Yeah. That's decent. You're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna bump into that. Right? I'm not gonna tell you what those words are. Mm -hmm. You know my scheme for doing it. Uh, good luck. Yeah, 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 good luck, right? right. Have yeah. It. yeah, you're not much better off than you were before I told you my scheme. Uh, so that's the kind of uh, uh, phrase that I'll do that, that, that I'll put on my um, my root certificate because I want it to be secure, right? Um, Mark Shuttleworth, you guys know who he is, right? Mm -hmm. The Ubuntu guy. Um, before he did Ubuntu, he created Thought, T H A W T E, the company that was bought by Verisign. Uh, they were, I don't know if they were the first company to to uh, create to sign uh, SSL certificates, but they were certainly one of the first, one of the biggest. He mm -hmm. sold the company for like 535 million euros uh, back in 2003. That's how he, I mean, 535 million euros is like $600 million. Uh, his company was all about signing certificates. Uh, I, I've had the opportunity to talk with him several times, and. I was talking about this, and he said his private key passphrase he kept on a floppy in his sock drawer. <laughs> he didn't keep it on the computer.